Okay. So uh, another problem where I'm asking you to provide the product and the mechanism. So again, mechanism, SN1, SN2, E1, E2, rearrangement, acid base. So here's your organic substrate. Here are the reagents and solvents and temperatures. Hit pause, go away, consider this for a minute, work through the flowchart, come back and figure out what the product is. Okay, you hit pause and work this, right? If you guys aren't working the problems, if you're just watching the videos, it's not going to help as much. So again, you have to work problems to, to get better at organic chemistry. So first question, do you have a leaving group? You do, there's a chloride. So that's on a, so this is yes, chloride on a secondary carbon. Leaving group on a secondary carbon doesn't really narrow things down a whole lot for you. Secondary, car, leaving groups on secondary carbons can undergo SN1 or SN2, uh, they can, they don't undergo SN1 all that fast because secondary cations not terribly stable, but it's, it exists. Uh, likewise, they don't undergo SN2 all that fast because there's a little bit of steric hindrance there. Not enough to prevent the reaction, but enough to slow it down. So SN1 or SN2 is both available. Are there beta hydrogens? There are. So you've got two beta hydrogens here. three there. Alright, so uh, either one of these three chemically distinct, so these two are diastereotopic, these three are identical, elimination is possible. And again, because you can do, you can have a secondary cation, so SN1 or SN2 from the secondary cation, beta hydrogen is E1 or E2, so you haven't really narrowed anything down. So, do you have a strong base? And the answer is no, you really don't. Alcohol is not a strong base, it's a weak base. Cyanide is a weak base. DMSO is a polar aprotic solvent, it's a weak base. So you don't. Therefore, you can't do E2. E2 requires a strong base. And so you could still do E1, that could be, that could be what we end up with, but you can't do E2. Do you have a good nucleophile? And you do, cyanide. Remember, sodium plus, cyanide minus. So SN2 will be faster than SN1, most likely. What about solvent and temperature? Again, solvent and temperature, don't, don't use these to tell you what the mechanism is, but they should support the mechanism. And the solvent in this case is polar aprotic, that supports SN2. Temperature is lower, that supports substitution. So this is consistent with SN2. And that's really where you end up, right? Good nucleophile, that'll do SN2. Solvent temperature support SN2. Secondary carbon can do SN2. So everything kind of points to SN2. What about this alcohol? So this is not a leaving group. Uh, again, if you haven't seen it, there's a little video tutorial on OHs as leaving groups. Uh, I suggest you watch that. So alcohols are not leaving groups. So we're left with an SN2 mechanism. So what's the product going to be? Well, the nucleophile will displace the chloride. And now watch out. That's got to be, it's an SN2 reaction. It's got to be a backside attack. That's going to invert the stereochemistry of that carbon. Get the colors right. Okay, so the cyanide does a backside attack on the chloride. The chloride is back into the board, so cyanide's got to come from front of the board, kick the chloride out. That'll leave your cyanide sticking out at you. Nothing happens to any other stereocenter. So you invert the stereochemistry only at the carbon that's being attacked. You don't invert stereochemistry anywhere else. So nothing happens to, look at the mechanism. Arrow from the cyanide to that carbon, arrow from the chloride, off. So the only the only chemical changes in the molecule will be on that carbon. All right. So this is our product, and it's the result of an SN2 reaction. 